discuss a little topic that seems to be going along and it has actually been going on for several thousands of years and inc in involving religion. I mean, it seems to be that everybody wants to work their way, you know, that they can work their way into heaven and that their good deeds will weigh out their bad and they can get into heaven. Um, the Jewish have done it, the uh, Muslims basically believe that. Um, even Mormons, uh, in a way, base their religion off of uh, works, you know, and they I want to get down and break it down that Christianity is not a works-based program. True Christian, true faith is not about that. So I wanted to kind of discuss, but first things first, I want to kind of see and where I think I we get the idea that it's a, that we have to by works. So if you would just follow me, and I'll kind of break it down for you. All right, several thousand years ago, the Israelites, God's chosen people, were slaves of the Pharaoh. And God decided that he wanted his people to be freed. So he sent Moses, who was an Israelite, he was part of the chosen tribe, he was, grew up as son of the Pharaoh, went away, God talked to him in the burning bush, came back, said, Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh did not cooperate, so God decided to put these ten plagues upon the Pharaohs, and finally they were set free. Now, as they were going on, Pharaoh changed his mind, chasing after him, they get to the Red Sea, it needs to be parts so they can go across. Parted, they go, Pharaoh comes chasing after, Red Sea goes over, kills them all. Israelites continue on to Mount Sinai, and Moses goes up on top to talk to uh, Mount Sinai to talk to God. While he's gone, his brother Aaron decides that they need to build a uh, golden calf out of the earrings and all that. Well, Moses comes down, and he gets upset because, you know, the only one true God smashes the tablets in anger and decides, okay, oh, forget this. Let me go back up and get these tablets again. And that's basically where, to me, that we get the idea that it's by works, not faith, that we work our way to heaven because of these ten commandments that were given to the original tribe of Judah, the Israelites. Let me discuss this a little further. All right, where we're going to start off is in Exodus 22, 17, where I just ended up talking about the ten commandments. Basically, as I said, you know, Moses goes up and gets the ten commandments, brings them down to his people and says, you know, basically these are the guidelines that I want you to live by, you know. Not really rules, but, you know, this is, if you do this, this would be the best way in order for you to honor me. Well, then what the Israelites do and the religious leaders, you know, through other divine intervention, you know, they're given many different things they have to do for ritual sacrifices, such as laying their, head, their hand on the head of the sacrifice, and having to cut, you know, away fat and then spill the blood on one side. I mean, even in Leviticus, we talk about, you know, right here, that even Leviticus 19.27, you know, it talks about that the guys should not trim their sideburns or cut their beards or anything like that. You know, and that makes it really difficult, you know, because then they basically they turn these into 613 different commandments. I mean, 10 were difficult enough as it was, but now to have 613 different things that you have to do to please God, it just made it so overbearing a lot of times, you know. And of course, people are going to lose faith. Well, then, of course, several thousand years later, we get Jesus comes along, and he makes, he preaches this message that's a lot different than what they had before, you know. He, his message concentrates around love. But he goes, one of the uh, religious leaders at the time, who was a very knowledgeable about the laws, was talking to Jesus. And he goes, you know, let's break this down. Let's make it simpler. You know, basically the concept that I like to call KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, which is, you know, keep it, keep it simple, stupid. Okay? And he goes, you know, what, what are the greatest commandments that Jesus asked this guy? He goes, well, let's see. You come down to it, it's, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself and just like exactly this makes it so much more easy you know that these are not ways to get to heaven it's just ways that for us to interact not between just us but between our God so let's we break it down and we can talk about it in Romans 7 it was written by Paul who used to be one of the highest ranking religious leaders and he even breaks it down here in Romans 7 about how that, you know, basically we're released from this law. You know, it's not guidelines that we have to live by to make it to where we reach heaven, but just ways that we can live better, basically. 
So I'm going to go over a couple more concepts over here about you know ways that we can do this. Ephesians 2.9, which says, Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none can boast about it. All right, not only do we have Ephesians 2.9, which talks about that salvation you know, is not a, is a reward for the good things we have done, so we cannot boast about it, but also these other, you know, Romans 3.28, 1 Corinthians 1.29, 2 Timothy 1.9, and Titus 3.5, they all discuss and go about the same concept. So it's not just one little verse. It goes over and over, and we're talking about not just, you know, even like I was talking about Paul, who wrote Romans, you know, very scholarly, very, you know, you know Ephesians. All these, a lot of these were by different people, but they all got the concept that it's not the works that we do, but it is through Jesus Christ. It is that way to reach salvation. Ephesians 2.8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Now, we're going to kind of backtrack on the next verse, with Ephesians 2a, which actually comes before, obviously, the first one we just talked about. But it kind of reiterates and verifies that, you know, for it's by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is a free gift of God. Basically, it just kind of reiterates and shows that before that it's a gift that we have been given. Nothing that we've worked for, like I said, because, or at least anyone should boast. Hebrews 11.1, 1, which says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now we try to figure out what faith is. You know, faith basically is the same thing all around, whether it is through Christianity, Judaism, Muslims. Um, but the best way to define it, even if you like to go to Webster's, is through the Bible, through Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And as I said, it's about, you know, we know... We did not see Jesus die on the cross. We did not see him grow up and live. But it's through our faith that we believe that he did exist. He died on the cross for our sins, for our salvation. You know, and when it comes down to it, is that by our faith we are saved. By believing in Jesus as our Savior, that is that is how we, be, you know, get to heaven. Not through the works that we do. Not by the person that we are. It's by the person that we can be through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. So, I hope this kind of uh, wraps it up and makes it a little more clear for you. And if everything goes well with this, I hope that we can do more and maybe get a little more education out there. Thank you very much. God bless. I'm so tired of trying to fight this I'm asleep and all I dream of Is waking to you Tell me that you will listen Your touch is what I'm missing 